Hey guys, John here with Terminal Goblin Games, and today we are going to create a monster. So, after the end of my last session, one of my players ended up getting cursed, and is uh, now a ghoul until they find a solution. Well, I was reading a novel the other day, the fourth book in the Thousand Lee series, The Second Expedition, and they ran across uh, some of these creatures, Zuko's. I thought, man, these are pretty cool. I need, I need to stat this. <laughs> And so um, that adventure, which I'm going to also make a video on, is going to use these guys. So I started looking up, you know, what Sukos were, and I found this website, y Yakai, I, th I believe, yakai.com, and they have a bunch of, like, Japanese and Chinese uh, folklore monsters. So you see here, these guys are, they're pretty cool. They got, like, tur turtle, sh <laughs> turtle? turtle shells, uh, turtle shells on their back. They've got these, like, tiger claws on their knees, which is pretty badass. And while I was reading this, uh, one of the things that popped out was uh, Suko rank above Kappa in the hierarchy of water goblins, and that they are sometimes referred to as the Yaka y Yakuza bosses of Kappa. So one Suko per 48 Kappa. Now this perfectly slots in with the way that BFRPG and other OSR retro clones do their monsters, because so many, after so many monsters, you get boss like big boss monsters so this is pretty this is pretty cool it's already built in for us so now where are we going to get these stats from well i decided i decided we're going to use some bears so this grizzly bear here we're going to use as a template for the suko and for the kappa we're going to do a do a black bear so you see they looks like they have a 1d4 1d4 1d6 uh, so two claws one bite claw claw bite and then they have a hug attack so uh, this right here for level four monster this tells me or on hit die four monster rather this tells me they have a an average attack of seven uh because you know d4 is like two then another two four four plus three is seven and they have this uh this little special 2d6 hug which seems like that happens uh after the uh after the attack of both claws hit which is which is interesting uh, we're not going to do that. We're going to do a, a drowning uh, mechanism since they, these things will only be fought near water. So now the uh, the kappas here. Now the kappas here, and this is set up to look kind of like the the basic fantasy because this is going to be converted to a LibreOffice doc, so people who don't know LaTeX can edit this and use it and stuff. But that's that's for later. Uh, so the armor class for the kappas, uh, we're going to go with the 14, and it's hit die of four. Number of attacks. So this, this one, uh, we're going to go with two claws plus drown. Now, BFRPG does have rules for drowning, I believe, uh, but we're just going to call that its own thing. So we'll do 1d4, 1d4, plus uh, 1d6, just to kind of keep that same, that same level of damage. Number appearing. So we'll have uh, wild and lair. So Lair is going to have 48, because that is where the Sukos are going to come in. And the Wild, uh, we'll say they hunt in packs of 6 to 9. So let's turn these into dice rolls that people can roll. So we will say D6, that should give an, an average between 6 and 9. And I want an average of 48. Okay, so Orcs get a 10D6 in their Lair. So we'll call these guys 8D6, because they're not nearly as prevalent as Orcs. Uh, but we still want a high number to... To stay true to the myth. Yeah, so this will give us an average of 7. And this will give us an average of around 28. Which is a pretty pretty good nest. Uh, save as. Uh, they can save as a fighter 2. The morale is going to be a 7. Treasure type. Uh, I don't know. XP is 25 times 5. Which is 100. Now for the flavor text. So we're going to say that... We'll say that a Kappa will never fail morale when a Suko is around because he is afraid that the Suko, of uh, what the Suko will do to it. All right, so now that we have this uh, set up and looking nice, then now it's time for the Suko. So the Suko, it's going to have a tougher hide, and it's actually going to have pretty good armor. We're going to call it 17. And the reason we're calling it 17 is because that is equivalent to, or sorry, we're going to call this a 16 because that is equivalent to scale mail here in the equipment emporium this guy's also going to have uh he's actually going to have claw claw knee ground now this guy's going to have uh, different ones because he is he's going to do a little bit more damage 
He's going to do an average of 6 damage. Uh, well, 1d6 not added together. Average of 3. And his drown is going to do a 2d6. An average of 7. Because he is going to just uh, pummel pummel them underneath with his, his claws and his knees. Uh, so save as. We'll just call it fighter 4. Drown is going to be a 9. These things are pretty confident in themselves. Trigger type we'll do later. 5 times 6. 5. Alright, so... Uh, other than the treasure type, which we will determine... Actually, let me, let's just look for a treasure type. We're going to go with treasure type C, because that is the same as an owl bear here. Yeah, it's the same as an owl bear here in BFRPG. And these guys are... Actually, the owl bears... The owl bears kind of more brutal. Look at that guy. Super intimidating. And, yeah, there we go. So, I'm going to be using these. Uh, I'm going to also submit them to the Basic Fantasy Forum, and uh, they'll help me with balance and kind of get all that going if you want to use a better version of this that's play tested uh, and if something if you like this idea but you don't uh, you don't agree with my stat choices you can change them that's, uh, that's the beauty it's your game it's not mine um, I promise I'm not going to kick down your door probably but uh, that's all we got for today thanks for uh, coming and hanging out and I hope you have a great rest of your day I'll see you later